Many of my colleagues in primary care are asking for more information on SMART treatment, which is also known as MART treatment. This stands for Maintenance and Reliever Therapy, which has actually been around for many years. And this came about because researchers realized many years ago that the best treatment for asthma is in the form of anti-inflammatory treatment, mainly in inhaled corticosteroids for most people with asthma. And this is logical because asthma is a chronic ongoing disease that is caused by underlying inflammation. So it doesn't really make any sense to treat this chronic condition with a bronchodilator reliever drug alone, which is usually in the form of a blue inhaler and which only works for about four hours. So by aiming treatment at the root cause of asthma, we're able to prevent symptoms and prevent attacks and prevent hospital admissions. So because many people don't adhere to their doctor's prescribed medication, especially where asthma inhalers are prescribed separately for prevention and for relief, that is in two separate inhalers, the solution is to deliver the essential anti-inflammatory inhaled corticosteroid in the same reliever device, i.e. in a combined two-in-one inhaler, which contains a preventer and also a quick-acting reliever drug. And this is called AIR therapy, standing for anti-inflammatory reliever therapy in one single inhaler device. Now I am going to focus today on anti-inflammatory reliever therapy, which is prescribed in two ways. It's prescribed as maintenance and reliever therapy, which is also called MART or SMART. And the other way is where the anti-inflammatory reliever therapy is prescribed as needed for symptoms of asthma without the need to take it regularly. And this is instead of using a blue inhaler for as needed symptoms. As I explained in this podcast, the way of treating us, this way of treating asthma, rather than the old way, where a blue short-acting reliever is prescribed first, without an inhaled corticosteroid preventer, is simply that it is safer than using the reliever alone without an inhaled corticosteroid. So the bottom line is that unless a prescribing doctor can be certain that the preventer drug they prescribe will be taken by the patient as prescribed, it is safer to prescribe the combined two-in-one anti-inflammatory reliever inhaler where the patient will get both relief from the symptoms and also deal with the underlying asthma inflammation. And there are two ways in which anti-inflammatory reliever therapy is prescribed according to their regulations, and I'll talk about those. So before I talk about smart or mild therapy, please do click the like and follow buttons. And if you find my podcast useful, um, please do follow me so that you'll be alerted whenever a new episode is published. Okay. So it's important to understand that asthma is a chronic ongoing disease that can and does flare up with attacks from time to time. The chronic disease is caused by inflammation, which causes swelling of the walls of the air passages in the lungs. It causes collection of phlegm inside these air passages. And it also causes irritation of the muscles inside the airway walls. And this is called hyperreactivity. And this irritation causes twitchiness of the airway muscles, which causes spasm with tightening of the airways. So the end result of the inflammation is that the airways get narrowed and you get less air into your lungs. And of course, you need oxygen in the air to stay alive. So this is a dangerous situation. Now, one important thing to learn is that the blue inhalers containing salbutamol, which is also called albuterol in some countries, only works on the spasm or tightening of the airways and not on the underlying inflammation causing the problem. And this is really essential to understand. However, inhaled corticosteroids work on the inflammation in a number of different ways. So these anti-inflammatory preventer drugs block trigger factors, like pollen for example, 
from initiating inflammation. And these corticosteroids also work against the swelling in the walls of the airways, and they also work against the collection of phlegm blocking the airways. And they also work against the irritation causing the airways to tighten them and go into spasm. And finally, these inhaled corticosteroids also work to clear up these effects of inflammation once they've been initiated. Okay, so as I've said, it's logical to use medication that does two things to treat asthma. This is by using a single two-in-one inhaler that has both an inhaled corticosteroid and also a quick-acting reliever. And there are two types of these inhalers available depending on where you are. One of these is where the quick-acting reliever is formoterol, which also works for about 12 hours. So it's quick-acting and long-acting. And the other one is albuterol, also called salbutamol, which only works for about four hours. So these two-in-one inhalers have one of those two short-acting relievers included together with the anti-inflammatory corticosteroid. And so the end result is that whenever one of these two-in-one inhalers is prescribed and used, the person gets immediate relief from the reliever and also at the same time gets a dose of anti-inflammatory corticosteroid to damp down and treat inflammation due to asthma which is causing the problem. Now we come to the two ways in which the two-in-one anti-inflammatory reliever inhalers are prescribed. That's firstly as MART and secondly as as as-needed therapy using the combined two-in-one inhaler. Today, as I'm doing this podcast, most of the research evidence that's available is on the use of the inhaled corticosteroid in combination with formoterol. So I'm going to focus on those that have an inhaled corticosteroid and formoterol, which is a quick-acting, long-acting bronchodilator reliever. So why prescribe a single inhaler with both the reliever and corticosteroid anti-inflammatory drug? The first thing to understand is that the short-acting relievers, usually found in blue inhalers, are essential for emergency treatment of asthma attacks. So I'm not saying these drugs should not be used. The point is they should not be used regularly, alone, as the only drug for treating asthma without an inhaled corticosteroid. The danger here is that when people only use the short-acting salbutamol or albuterol inhaler for their asthma, or if too much of this drug is used regularly, the asthma gets worse, and the person could have an acute asthma attack or could even die from overuse of these drugs if they're not taking an inhaled corticosteroid preventer. Therefore, it's safer to prescribe a combined anti-inflammatory reliever inhaler for day-to-day use and to have the blue inhaler in reserve for emergency use in addition to other treatment according to the patient's self-management plan, which is provided by their own doctor, for use when having an attack. Sadly, many people prescribed separate preventer and relief inhalers don't understand or haven't been told why it's important to use the inhaled corticosteroid preventer as the main treatment to prevent asthma flare-ups and attacks and to only use the reliever for relief. The blue inhalers are really for emergency use And if someone is needing to use this regularly, or if they need to use it more than twice a week, their asthma is out of control and an urgent asthma review is needed. So the problem is that many people don't take the preventer as prescribed and only use their blue reliever inhaler. Of course, it's essential, as in any other medical problem, that people understand and know how and when to use their prescribed medication. In fact, the theme for this year's World Asthma Day is that education is very important for all, and that includes for healthcare providers as well as for people who have asthma. So in asthma, this education is usually provided 
with a clear, agreed, written self-management plan, which explains exactly which drug is to be used and when. And if you are a patient or a parent with asthma listening to this podcast, if you don't have a self-management plan, you should ask your doctor to provide one for you, which will explain your medication, it'll explain how to recognize danger signs, what to do when these flare up, and how and when to get emergency help when needed. So why is anti-inflammatory reliever therapy being prescribed in one inhaler instead of two separate inhalers, one with inhaled corticosteroids and another with short-acting reliever in a separate inhaler, which I've said is usually blue? Well, the short answer is that it is safer. This approach can and often does prevent asthma attacks and I'm talking about severe asthma attacks which could land a person up in hospital or which could cause asthma deaths. So let's talk now about when the two forms of anti-inflammatory reliever treatment with inhaled corticosteroid and formotrol are used. As I said, formotrol is a quick-acting, long-acting reliever and is available in combination with a number of different inhaled corticosteroids in one single inhaler. So the first way it is used, maintenance and reliever therapy, or MART, which is also called SMART in some countries, is used for people with moderate to severe asthma. Here, the MART inhaler is prescribed to be used regularly, either once or twice a day, and then the same inhaler is used if the person gets any symptoms due to asthma. And those symptoms, of course, are coughing, wheezing, or shortness of breath, where wheezing is a whistling sound coming from the chest and not from the upper airways or the nose. The important point here is that this inhaler is used for relief instead of the blue inhaler, because it works against the inflammation as well as giving instant relief. Now, it's important that the different kinds of two-in-one anti-inflammatory inhalers are available and your doctor will explain how many extra puffs you can take in a day before calling for emergency help if you're not improving. The information will of course be included inside the inhaler packaging by the manufacturers. So if you are a patient well, or a prescriber, do read this information. If you're a patient and you've got asthma or you're a parent or somebody with asthma, your doctor will explain when you should call for help and, if necessary, when you should use your blue inhaler if your asthma is getting worse and you're not improving using the two-in-one inhaler and you need emergency assistance. Essentially, if you're at all concerned that you're having an asthma attack or that your symptoms are not improving when taking extra medication, as advised by your doctor, you should contact your doctor urgently. And this information should really be provided in your self-management plan from your own doctor. The second way that air therapy is prescribed, that's anti-inflammatory reliever therapy, is in people who've got mild asthma, where the combined two-in-one inhaler is prescribed to be used as needed whenever the person has asthma symptoms. So in this case, the person is not advised to take the medication regularly, once or twice a day, and they're only advised to take it when needed. Now, it's important to say that this kind of treatment is authorised in different ways throughout the world, 48 countries at the time of speaking. So a prescriber needs to be aware of the prescribing regulations in their location. Now you might also ask, what is mild asthma and how is it diagnosed? The problem here is that there is no agreed international definition of mild asthma. And most importantly, mild asthma does not mean that there is no risk. About a third of people who die from asthma are thought to have so-called mild asthma by their doctors treating them. So practically, we use the definition of asthma symptom control to help decide when to use as-needed anti-inflammatory reliever therapy. So if someone's having symptoms less than twice a week and 
they have not had an asthma attack in the previous year, they would be defined as having so-called mild asthma. And they could be treated, if the license permits in your location, with as-needed air therapy. And the self-management plan should clearly state that if they have an asthma attack, or if they need to use their inhaler more than twice a week, an urgent asthma review is needed by the doctor or trained asthma need or trained asthma nurse, sorry. Then a decision can be made on whether to step up the treatment to MART, where a regular dose of the two in one inhaler would be advised, and for the same device to be used for symptoms. I have put a link to a recent paper we wrote which provides prescribers the evidence basis for this type of treatment in asthma with details of potential benefits compared to the use of a short-acting reliever alone for relief or using a short-acting reliever together with an inhaled corticosteroid. Now, with regard to as-needed treatment, I should add that there is no license, as far as I'm aware anywhere in the world, for use of as-needed two-in-one inhalers in children under the age of 11. And so what is advised in the international guidance documents is that in children under the age of 11, if they are prescribed a short-acting blue reliever inhaler for use for symptoms, um, they could use their inhaled corticosteroid inhaler at the same time as using the blue reliever inhaler. Now, there's only one study published worldwide which confirms that this is more beneficial than using a blue reliever on its own. Um, It is safer than using the blue short-acting reliever on its own. So in the United Kingdom, there's currently only one inhaled product licensed for as-needed anti-inflammatory reliever therapy, and that's for people with mild asthma over the age of 11. And there are six products available for prescribing as mild therapy, two of which are licensed for those over the age of 11 in the UK. So wherever you are, check your local regulatory prescribing advice to find out which drugs and which device combinations are available for use for mild therapy or for as-needed anti-inflammatory reliever therapy. So in summary, the advantage of prescribing anti-inflammatory reliever therapy or air therapy is that the person with asthma will always get a drug that both helps to relieve symptoms and at the same time will also work against the underlying inflammation that's causing the asthma symptoms. I've discussed the two types of air therapy that are available and these differ in different parts of the world. And these are maintenance and reliever therapy, so-called MART or SMART therapy, for people over the age of 11 in the UK and in many other countries who have moderate to severe asthma. The licensed use of this treatment will vary, as I say, depending on where you are in the world. And the second way that air therapy is prescribed is as needed, that is, you take it for symptoms when they occur, in people aged over the 11 with mild asthma. The licensed regulatory use of air therapy is different in parts of the world, and I keep saying this over and over again because it's really important. I know people listen to this podcast from all over the world, and so it's really important to find out what the local regulations are with regard to prescribing drugs in your location. And finally, The reason for prescribing air therapy rather than the use of short-acting reliever either in combination with separate inhalers um, with an inhaled corticosteroid or in a combination inhaler is based on evidence that it is safer than using the short-acting reliever inhaler. And I've put a link to a recent paper that we wrote which details the evidence and the benefits of air therapy compared to as-needed inhaler reliever therapy with a short-acting reliever.